Hi everyone and welcome to Washington Grown. I'm Christy Gordson. Kids play a huge role in the world's future and their role in agriculture is no exception. So this episode is all about kids! We'll head to the Skillet Diner and see what makes this spot a kid favorite. Then head to the kitchen and whip up a dish of our own. I have literally watched kids get super excited after they eat these. Then we're in Pullman at the annual state FFA convention, finding out how it's helping today's youth learn skills to change the world. And you may be looking at the future Rachel Ray. Not many vegetables are in season, but cauliflower is. We're cooking up a tasty dish with a YouTube phenomenon who has an important message for kids her age. All that and much more on Washington Grown. Are you ready to cook me up? Okay, I don't have the hang of this. So this is where we get our water. <laughs> Cheers. Hopefully they won't eat my shoelaces. <laughs> our first stop today is in Seattle at the Skillet Diner in the Ballard neighborhood. Skillet Street Food started just as that. Great food served via Airstream. Since then, it's transformed into three restaurants, two Airstreams, and a taco truck. All of the diners use simple, local ingredients to serve up only the best upscale comfort food that has kids begging their parents to come back for more. Why do you like it here? Like it? Because it's good. Tell me what you're eating. Uh, I'm eating mac and cheese, and I like it how it's really, really cheesy. But I think there's really good food. And parents agree. The grilled peanut butter and jelly sandwich is delicious. It tastes excellent. The kids are happy by the look on his face. <laughs> there's other kids here, so you don't feel like your kids make too much noise, that it's a big deal. Executive chef Nick Novello says that's what Skillet is all about. The atmosphere at Skillet is super kid-friendly. It's kind of a little loud in here. You're able to allow your kids to be themselves and talk and eat and be a little messy. And then we come by and clean it all up. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. We started to have kind of a family following early on because our food is so family friendly with our burgers with bacon jam, grilled cheese with fried chicken, and then you have our mac and cheese, you have our pork belly waffles. And coming up, we're in the kitchen with Chef Nick cooking up a kid favorite, some skillet donuts. There's a lot of powdered sugar on them, so I kind of call them <laughs> kitty crack. Uh, <laughs> kitty crack. I'm at Washington State University and I'm joined by the Executive Director of Washington FFA. This is Abby Demirler. And there are a lot of these blue coats all around campus. What's going on? This is our 85th State FFA Convention. So it's the one time a year our entire association comes together for three days. They compete to see who is the best of the best, who's been learning the most. Hi, right, so what is FFA? Most people remember it as the future farmers of America, which is how it started in 1928. And over the years, we've evolved and grown, and now it's recognized simply as the National FFA Organization. And Washington's a branch of that. And nationwide, there's um, more than 610,000 members. And here in Washington, we have more than 8,000. What is the mission of FFA? The mission of FFA is to promote a positive difference in the lives of students through premier leadership, personal growth, and career success. So really three components um, that come together to create a holistic approach and impact on students. I thought we'd take it to the students and see what they think of FFA. I love it. I think it's a very good program. It really helps to further our education. You can go and learn to become a better leader, not just become a better farmer or a uh, rancher. It gives you a lot of experience, especially with speaking and uh, marketing and creed and uh, parliamentary procedure. It's a really cool organization. <laughs> you know, I think a lot of people just think these kids are just working with animals or working with agriculture, but it's way more than that. Yes, we have evolved to really hit so many different facets. This organization is so full of opportunities that most people don't even realize because at first look, they just think about farming. 
and this has so much more depth and texture and the opportunities in scholarship and in education and in career preparation are second to none. The really cool thing that people don't realize about agricultural education and FFA is it's really the perfect blend of STEM, which is such a buzzword, right? Because agriculture is science, it is technology, you have to have engineering skills and mathematics. So it's really that place where all of that always is coming together and so our students come out with not only those educational skills but the, the leadership and the communication to be prepared to just really take flight. While visiting the farmers market in Spokane's Kendall Yards, we spotted a nearby osprey's nest. We eagerly watched as parent osprey delivered a fish from the Spokane River to a chirping young bird in the twiggy nest. Like the osprey, we deliver food to our young until they're ready to forage on their own. This process takes many years and sets deep patterns in young people's brains about food sources, taste, and flavor. When young people are exposed to gardens, whole foods, and cooking, they see how food is cared for and learn about nourishing their bodies. Fast food has its place, as it can provide nourishment as well, but when kids see how to grow tomatoes, kale, spinach, potatoes, berries, and beans, they'll eat those foods. If you don't have the time or skill to grow a garden, you can still be a role model for adding Washington-grown foods into your day. It's far better to be adding in a wide variety of nourishing foods than telling someone to avoid specific foods. At lunch and dinner, make it a goal to include vegetable crunch. I like the phrase, lunch with crunch. Teaching your kids how to prepare a few easy meals goes miles toward keeping them connected to their food. Show them that all foods can be eaten in moderation. Because like the young osprey, we all have to someday leave the nest and there's no better place to be raised than Washington. Coming up, we're back at Skillet Diner to cook up a tasty treat, powdered cake donuts. Mmm. Now, Tomas is off to Lind to meet up with a brilliant young lady whose passion for agriculture and FFA involvement is contagious. When you meet 19-year-old Maya Wall, who was raised on a wheat farm, there is no doubt that the future of Washington agriculture is in good hands. This is what I want. This is what the money maker in the wheat production. Oh yeah. And to think that one of these, combined with hundreds of thousands of others, can produce a loaf of bread for a family. I'm with Maya Wall, whose family has been in the farming industry for five generations. Is that right? Yeah. Where are we at? Um, currently we're in Lynn, Washington, so I've grown up here my entire life. Pretty much lived in the same house my entire life. My grandfather's grandfather came over from the Ukraine, and they actually landed in Walla Walla, Washington. And then, uh, lo and behold, free land and land. So they moved up here. And over time, my grandfather started farming the land. Well, they weren't cutting 4,000 acres a year. They were cutting 400, 500 maybe, with a team of horses and a combine that they towed behind it. So things have definitely changed. I remember my dad telling me he grew up riding in combines that didn't have cabs on them. That's crazy to me because I have grown up riding in cabs that have air, air conditioning, conditioning, radio, <laughs> GPS. GPS, coolers under the buddy seat. I mean, right. the technology has changed so much in those five generations, it just blows my mind. But truly, that the, the farm that we're looking at right now has been here and it's been in our name for so long now that we're kind of part of the land. We've been working it for so long. So with our agricultural background and with just the amazing family that I do have, I've been able to grow and to see things that not every kid has been able to see. They've instilled a very unique perspective in me, and um, I'm so grateful for that. This last year, I served as the Washington State FFA officer. Instead of going to my freshman year of school, I served the FFA. Wow. And so, yeah, wow. <laughs> so I was able to travel quite a bit this year. I went to um, 33 schools and I would take over an ag class with one of my teammates and we'd talk to them about agriculture and about leadership and everything that they can do to be advocates as well. Now, Maya is heading to Kansas State University to study ag communications and political science, something that she took great interest in while doing all of her ag volunteer work. 
I was able to go to, back to Washington, D.C. and participate in National Ag Day. I found that legislators aren't necessarily um, educated to the point that a normal agriculturalist would be, and with my background, I feel like I have the potential to be able to do that for them. And so with a political science minor, I really like to help people in Olympia, people in D.C. really see the benefits of agriculture and see the, the side of the farmer. Give me one thing you want other kids your age to know about farming. I think I want them to know that you don't have to come from an ag background to become a part of agriculture. Whether you grew up on a wheat farm or whether you grew up in downtown Seattle and you're extremely good at biology, it doesn't matter. We need all types of people to come into this industry and to find those solutions. My dad has grown up farming his entire life, but it is going to be completely different for my kids. And so for my generation to step up and to find those solutions, to say, yeah, we do have less acreage. We, what are we going to do about it? We have more mouths to feed. What are we going to do about it? That makes me excited. We're back at Skillet Diner in Seattle. It's a family-friendly restaurant serving upscale comfort food that the kids love. Do you like it here? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Why do you like it here? It's good. Tell me what you're eating. Um, I'm eating mac and cheese, and I like it how it's really, really cheesy. And that good food is in an atmosphere the parents love. Fun atmosphere and casual and affordable too. There's other kids here, so you don't feel like your kids make too much noise that it's a big deal. Now we're in the kitchen with executive chef Nick Novello to cook up a few of Skillet's famous donuts. I'm a donut freak, if you can't tell. Um, I love cake donuts, so I wanted to make a cross between a cake donut and a normal kind of Zeppeli drop donut. So it's airy, dense, and it has that texture all in the same time. First, we combine flour, sugar, baking powder, and a little salt. One more pinch. Okay. One more pinch. Yeah. I have little pinches. Nice. Then we slowly pour in our milk and melted butter. Kids really enjoy these. There's a lot of powdered sugar on them, so I kind of call them <laughs> kitty crack. Um, <laughs> <laughs> kitty crack. Because I have literally watched kids get super excited after they eat these, and they're all over the place. Right. So these eggs that we're going to crack right now, they're from Yelm, Washington, so we can start That's cracking awesome. these guys. Okay. It's all you. How did you come up with the donut recipe? You just messing around one day? Or? Trial and error. Trial and error. Yeah, I tried a lot of donuts. So <laughs> I actually set out to make a great donut. So I was like, you know what? We're gonna we're gonna do this. We need donuts. We're gonna make a great donut and uh, see if we can get it. Kids cool. love a lot of the food. Here. We have great offerings on the kids' menu like crustless grilled cheese, grilled peanut butter and jelly sandwich, kids' mac and cheese, nice. kids' burgers, things of that nature. But then the kids are like, you know what? I want what you're having today. Yeah. So we've got kids trying their first piece of pork belly here. Uh, we've got kids uh, going outside of the box and trying fish, trying grits. And so what are their reactions? They order it again the next time they come in. They're of super excited. They do. Yeah. yeah. We're developing these uh, kids to to know good food and to know that how that food tastes is being translated all the way to the back end to how that animal is raised and to how the animal is prepared and how it is treated to uh, our preparations here in the restaurant. We grate some nutmeg into our dough. It's a special ingredient. Everybody tries to guess it, but then I tell them, so it's okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and scoop our dough into the fryer to make those donuts come to life. And I'm gonna put three in there for me and one for you. No, what? Sure. no. <laughs> I want at least three. How many of these do you make in a day? Probably serve over 600 donuts a weekend. Wow. These deep fryers are full of donuts. Yeah, I can imagine. This one's full of donuts and this one's full of fried chicken. So we, we go through And it. you can have both at the same time. You could have Could both you? at the same time. Fried chicken and donuts. We make dreams come true here at Skillet. So uh, I actually had a guy come in the other day. His dream was to have a triple stack waffle sandwich with pork belly, bacon, fried chicken, and melted cheddar on top. Wow. So we made his dream come true and he was super excited. He ate the whole thing. Once our donuts are good and fried, we pull them out and roll them in our powdered sugar. And this is where the magic happens. We're going to roll it around like this. We're going to try our best not to get it all over ourselves. So here we go. Wow. Here's our donuts right here. Those look incredible. Okay. Here we go. Mmm. Oh, you're right. It's not overly dense. It's right. nice and fluffy, um, but it still has it's that cakey texture. It's not super full of air either. You know, you're not going to stay clean eating these. 
That it's okay. Matter. You know, it's kind of like a trademark or... It's like a rite of passage. You have powdered sugar all right. over you. People all know that, you know what? You just have some skillet donuts. You're a skillet. And that's okay. You might even smell a little bit like donuts. <laughs> to get the recipe for skillets donuts, log on to our website at wagrown.com. Coming up, we're in the kitchen at Second Harvest, and we're going to show you how to sneak in some lentils to make delicious chocolate chip cookies. Now we're off to meet Amber Kelly, a YouTube cooking sensation. Not many vegetables are in season, but cauliflower is. Amber is only 12 years old and already has over 100 cooking videos and 16,000 subscribers to her channel. She travels the country to share her message that being healthy is cool and found some famous friends along the way who think the same. Like Amber Kelly, our winner from Washington State. Today, Amber's showing me how to make what she calls the best hummus ever. Welcome to my kitchen. Thank you so much, Amber. I'm really excited to be I am here. I'm so excited. What are we going to make? Today, we're making what my family calls the best hummus ever. Okay. <laughs> and the actually, best hummus ever. Yes, exactly. Well, All right, let's are get you ready? started. Yeah. Okay, it's really easy. So, you're going to be the dumper. I'm good okay. at that. So, you can dump the garlic into our food processor. <laughs> okay. Once we mince the garlic, we add chickpeas, salt, and pepper. Then we juice two lemons. So the whole premise of your channel is uh, Healthy is Cool. Yes. And what made you decide to go in that direction? Um, well, when I was younger, um, my parents will actually, I've grown up with a pretty healthy lifestyle mm -hmm. because my family talks about eat well, move well, think well. And so when I was in second grade, though, I got teased because I had healthy lunches. Really? And even by like my friends yeah. because they had like all these prepackaged foods. And <laughs> it was hard because I knew that being healthy was cool, yeah. but they didn't. And so that's why I started this cooking show is to show everybody that being healthy is cool and that Absolutely. when you eat foods, it really impacts your life and that it's easy too. And the success of your of your YouTube show has taken you all over the place and you've been able yeah. to meet all these cool people. It's been amazing. I mean, I've been to the White House and it was me and my mom and we had this lunch at the White House and it was the coolest thing ever. I was, really? I think, nine, ten years old and it was amazing. Just I got to get thing. all dressed up all fancy. Oh and my gosh. So yeah. That is awesome. Go ahead and dump, <laughs> dump the lemon juice in there. You can pour it in there. Perfect. Okay, so now I'm going to put the lid on and we're gonna turn this on. And the key to this is to make it really creamy. So we slowly add in olive oil. Once the olive oil is added and the texture is smooth, we scrape it into a bowl and get ready to give it a try. Okay, dig in. Mm-mm-mm. So this is a tahini lift. Tahini free. There tahini you go. free. Hummus, I love it. What is the message that you most want to get out to kids and, and, and people your age? Um, well, I, one of them is that being healthy is cool and that you can make really easy and delicious recipes that are healthy. Mm -hmm. And also that kids can cook because I'm 12 years old and I love cooking. Mm -hmm. It's one of my hobbies. And so sometimes you just need to let your kid, according to my mom, let your kid get in the kitchen yeah. and experiment because it's really fun. And plus, you're going to need to learn how to cook no matter what. Even if, Eventually, you, yeah. even if you're not dreaming of being a chef when you get older. I mean, you got to cook to live. Right. So it's a really good life skill, as my mom says. Yes, start yeah. now. Mm -hmm. Start early. Exactly. So Amber, you're already a YouTube sensation, <laughs> but uh, we're going to give you a chance to do your TV host oh, thing right practice. now. Okay, yeah. So okay. toss it out to Tomas. For All us right. If you can. Well, we are going to continue eating this delicious hummus, so let's see what Tomas has out on the street. Macaroni and cheese, chicken nuggets, peanut butter and jelly. These are classic kid foods. And you know what else they love? Potato chips. I've got four distinct flavors of potato chips that just hit the market, and they're quite unique. We've got truffle fries, we've got a Reuben sandwich, a Greek gyro, and biscuits and gravy. Now let's take these around and see what people actually think about them. All right, you guys like potato chips? Yeah. yeah. Do you have a favorite kind of chip? Doritos, salt and vinegar, cheddar cheese, barbecue. I've got four different flavors of chips here, and I want you to tell me what you think of them, okay? Can I give it a thumb sideways? <laughs> you bet. It's like ranch or something. 
The first flavor, okay, is truffle fries. Okay, I'll try the second one here. I like that one. You like that one? Kind of tastes like barbecue a bit. It's like salty and then it's, it's sweet. This one here is actually flavored like a Reuben sandwich. I don't know what that is. I don't eat sandwiches. You don't eat sandwiches at all? Nothing between two pieces of bread? It takes a hint of the thousand dollar dressing in it. Yeah, like the sweetness of it. Yeah, that tastes like a Reuben. Does it taste like a Reuben? Try the third one here. Yeah. <laughs> All right, that's a thumbs up. What do you think that one tastes like? All right, all those good. This is a Greek gyro. You ever had a gyro before? Yeah. No? No. Oh, yeah. I definitely taste oh. a little gyro. It's got that little tang yeah. and that tzatziki yeah. sauce in there. All right, guys, the last one. Here we go. Better? Number four here was biscuits and gravy. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> That's I like interesting. The sausage okay. flavor. Very good. You like biscuits and gravy? You don't eat biscuits and gravy, do you? No. <laughs>
vegetables and spaghetti sauce, you know, and stuff like that. What have you? You have any good ideas? You know, I like to disguise my vegetables and chilies and things like oh, that. Oh yeah, very um, good. You know, my kids like. They like zucchini bread and like pumpkin bread and that sort of thing. And so that's sort of a way to, to sneak in some of that stuff, even though it, you know, One is like a sweet my kind mom of thing. Made zucchini muffins. And Ooh. I thought they were gonna be super gross. <laughs> but um, they were like super good. They were super good, I know. I love anything with zucchini in it. Next, we put them in the oven to bake, and after a little bit, they're ready. They look good, oh, don't they? <laughs> So good and healthy. And so lentils have a lot of protein in them? Yeah, there's up to nine grams of protein per half cup serving of lentils. So it's one of the leading non-animal sources of protein. Yeah. And very inexpensive. These smell delicious. So I think it's time we get to, we get to try them. That sounds great. Yeah? Okay, let's do it. Oh yeah. Mm -mm -mm. It's got the crunchy nuts and the really good texture with the lentils. Mm -hmm. Okay, I don't bite into it and say, Oh, there's lentils in there. All that hard work Keena did for us with that fork at the beginning right. really makes that possible. Really yeah. wholesome tasting. Mm -hmm. That's perfect. Great Good job, job. Keenan. Good job, Drew. Mm -hmm. Cheers, everybody. Cheers. It's delicious. I love it. To get this recipe for lentil chocolate chip cookies, head to our website at wagrown.com. It's no secret that today's youth are tomorrow's future for agriculture and beyond. That's it for this episode of Washington Grown. Thanks for watching. Bye.